there's a lot of confusion about what a soul is. And first, let me tell you what it isn't. Uh, it's not some uh, mystical, ethereal, invisible part of a human being that flies up after a person dies and maybe passes over New York or Los Angeles on the way to heaven and then can come back and talk to you if it decides to do that. Uh, biblically, the soul actually is the entire person. It's not a, a part of a person that just goes on. To really understand this, we really need to study the concept of how man was created. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 2, beginning in verse 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, this is very contrary to a lot of the details of how this is taught within Christianity today. So this would mean the body plus the breath equals a living soul. Body plus the breath of God is a living soul. Another word that the Bible uses for the breath of life is the Spirit of God. And that's the spirit or breath that God breathes into human beings that gives us life. Look in Job chapter 27, verse 3, for example. The Bible says, all the while my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. Isaiah 2, verse 22, cease from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? So I want you to notice how these two verses use the spirit of God and the breath of God interchangeably. In Psalm 104, which is a psalm all about different creatures that God made and also man, it describes what happens when they all die. Uh, in verse 29, it says, you hide your face, they are troubled, you take away their breath, which is the breath of life, and they die and they return to their dust. And then you send forth your spirit and they are created and you renew the face of the earth. So here, breath and spirit are used interchangeably. When God first makes man in the book of Genesis, it says he formed man from the dust of the ground, and then he breathes into him the breath of life. That word there is, in Hebrew, is roach. And it's not distinct from even humans. It uses that same term for any living creature as the breath of life. So when you look up that word, it's actually the word ruach, and it means breath or wind. So a soul is a combination of body, which is dust, and the breath of life, which is spirit. And when those two things are together, when those two ingredients are together, you have a living soul. The word for soul here is the Hebrew word nefesh, and it literally means a breathing creature. The Bible says, and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly. So that word nefesh is the same word used to describe the living creatures that moved in the waters. And the reason why that's important to understand is because there are people who believe that a soul is something that is distinctly human, right? Like we have a soul. But as you look at the way that the Bible uses the term soul, it uses it not only for people, but for any living thing. I think it's important for us to understand that we do not have souls, we are souls. The Bible actually confirms this in the book of Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 41. It says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Another scripture that verifies this is in Acts chapter 27, verse 37. It says, And we were all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. Again, this isn't speaking of a ghost ship. In fact, this is actually making it very clear that these are living, breathing people that was in the ship, not some ghostly apparitions. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 20, where Peter goes on to say that eight souls, or in other words, eight persons, were saved in the ark upon the water. So clearly we see scriptures pertaining to what a person is, is a soul. 